Viking Monday. Welcome back. We're uh, back with uh, Lawrence Korb and Danielle Pletk. Uh, Danielle, here's the, a key line from the National Intelligence Estimate released this week on Iran and its nuclear program. We judge with high confidence that in fall 2003, Tehran halted its nuclear weapons program. We also assess with moderate to high confidence that Tehran, at a minimum, is keeping open the option to develop nuclear weapons. Do you believe that this is accurate, this assessment of the NIE? Well, first of all, I think you left out a very important part of that, and that is that first sentence actually has a little footnote on it, and they further define what they mean by nuclear weapons program, and that is the military component of the program. And I'll say, I didn't know that we ever knew for sure that there was a military component to the Iranian nuclear weapons program. So I'm glad to know that we're certain that there was one in 2003 when so many people were saying so. If the CIA believes that in fact that was ended, that's a good thing. But it's never been the real focus of either the United States or the international community. We've all been focusing on the overt nuclear program about which the IAEA and the United Nations have said Iran is not disclosing sufficient information. That's been the real focus. They're, they are continuing to enrich uranium, which they're entitled to do under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but it's supposed to be transparent and and, and, and even the IAEA and, General, and the Director General Mohammed al baradei telling me only a few weeks ago that there's elements of that that aren't being transparent. Well, there's no doubt about it, but I think the significance of this is that the Iranians are a rational country. They also use the term of the NIE cost-benefit analysis. Like most nations, they look at the cost and they look at the, at the uh, benefits. Remember in 2003, their main adversary, Saddam Hussein, was overthrown. They restarted their nuclear program, which had begun under the Shah in the 1980s after Saddam invaded and used chemical weapons uh, ag against them. I think it also shows that El Barade, the IAEA, was right again because he kept saying they're not weaponizing and he said before the war, we went into Iraq that, you know, they didn't have nuclear weapons. Here's the part that he's referring to in the NIE, this other line that they said, uh, our assessment that the program probably was halted primarily in response to international pressure suggests Iran may be more vulnerable to influence on the issue than we judged previously. Uh, what do you think of that? Because if, in fact, they did suspend their nuclear weapons program in 2003, uh, and if it's accurate, as they say, diplomatic international pressure caused them to do so, maybe there's a whole new way of looking at this uh, government in Iran. Well, two things I think are important to understand here. Number one, it's interesting that in the publicly released key judgments in the NIE, the CIA folks who wrote that didn't say what happened in 2003. The most important thing that happened that year wasn't any great diplomatic initiative against Iran. It was that we invaded and overthrew Saddam Hussein. I think Muammar Gaddafi in Libya was looking like that. I think the Iranians were looking at that, and I think they all said, hmm, perhaps it may not be worth the risks. That's good news. What do you think about that? Because that's, that's a fair point. Well, there's no doubt about the fact that getting rid of Saddam gave the, undermine the real reason they restarted it. Remember that when the mullahs came in, they stopped it. The Shah started this, this program. They stopped it. When, when Saddam invaded, they started it again, no doubt about it. But at the same time, the Europeans were also making them aware of the benefits that they could get from the international community if, in fact, they, d uh, they did stop. And so I think you have a combination of both of those things. And the main thing to me is Iran's like any other nation. Look at cost benefits and, and make a judgment. Has the U.S. taken people. a major hit with its credibility around the world as a result of this new NIE? I think the U.S. has taken a major hit with its credibility. But I don't think that any of the assault on our credibility was from the Iranians or from the Europeans. I think it was from this NIE and the way that it was crafted. And that's really my big complaint, is that the politicization of this has really been strong. That first sentence really wasn't quite necessary to be framed that way. I think that they could have explained very clearly what they meant without a footnote, said, in fact, that the weapons program that we never knew exists, we now judge, doesn't exist. You know, that's what's so troubling about this, is that the CIA and the ODNI, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence really do seem to be engaging in politics. They seem to have a political aim. These, both of these guys who run it, uh, their career military officers, Admiral Mike McConnell yes. uh, and General Michael Hayden, they're not politicians.
politicians. Well, what are you trying to say? That people in military positions don't have political views? That's, that's news to me, and I've lived in Washington for a long time. I think the only conclusion we can draw from the way that it was framed, and in addition from the fact that the original copy that was showed to the White House was not that copy, Very quickly. is that conclusion. Uh, no, McConnell... Dick Cheney, vice president, said he's satisfied with it. He liked McConnell. He worked with him when he was Secretary of Defense, and he pushed to have him run the whole intelligence community. And it wasn't just the CIA. It was 16 agencies that signed up to this. All right. We've got to leave it right there, but uh, the subject is not going away. Danielle Pletka, thanks for coming in. Larry Corp, thanks to you as well. Still ahead, what will Congress do about the CIA's decision to destroy those videotapes of those harsh interrogations? We'll discuss that and a lot more with two key members of the United States Senate. They're standing by live. Stay with us. Late Edition continues right after this.